Hi everyone, welcome to the first video in my S7300 PLC programming tutorial series. Before diving into PLC programming, it's essential to understand the hardware. A strong grasp of the hardware will help you better understand programming concepts and how the entire system operates. So in this video, I'll take you through the S7300 hardware, breaking down its components and explaining their functions in detail. Let's get started. A PLC, Programmable Logic Controller, is an industrial computer designed to control machines and automated production lines. It is widely used in industries such as manufacturing, power plants, and oil and gas, making automation more efficient and reliable. A PLC consists of three essential components. Inputs are devices such as sensors, switches, and push buttons that send signals to the PLC from the controlled system. Central Processing Unit CPU is the brain of the PLC that processes the program, makes decisions, and executes control logic. Outputs are devices such as actuators, motors, relays, and other controlled equipment that receive commands from the PLC to perform specific actions. How does a PLC work? First, we write a control program and download it to the PLC. The CPU continuously scans and reads signals from input devices, such as sensors, switches, and push buttons. Then, based on the programmed logic, the CPU processes the input signals and determines the required actions. Finally, the CPU sends signals to output devices like motors, relays, or lights to control the system. This cycle runs continuously as long as the PLC is in run mode, ensuring real-time automation of industrial processes. This is the S7300 PLC. As shown in this picture, the S7300 PLC consists of several key components. Power supply provides the necessary voltage to power the system. CPU central processing unit is the brain of the PLC, responsible for executing the control program. Digital input module receives signals from sensors, push buttons, and switches. Digital output module sends control signals to actuators, motors, and other devices. Now, let's go through each module in detail. The first module I want to describe is the power supply module. The power supply module in the S7300 PLC converts 230 or 110 volt AC into 24 volt DC. This 24 volt DC output is essential for powering the CPU and other modules in the PLC system, ensuring stable operation. The S7300 power supply module comes with different output current ratings, such as 2, 5 or 10 amps. The appropriate power supply amperage is selected based on the total power consumption of the CPU, input and output modules, and other connected devices. This picture shows the 5 amp power supply module. This selector is used to turn the power supply on or off. This selector allows selection between 110 or 230 volt AC as the input voltage. Green LED indicator lights up when the power supply is operating correctly and providing a stable 24 volt DC output. Input and output terminals are used to connect the power supply. Input terminals are used to connect the AC supply voltage, 110 or 230 volt AC. Output terminals are used to provide 24 volt DC to power the PLC system. The L plus terminals in the output refer to the positive of the power supply, while the M terminals refer to the negative side of the power supply. The second module I want to describe is the CPU. The CPU is the brain of the S7300 PLC, responsible for processing and executing automation tasks. It performs the following key functions. 1. Reading input signals from input modules, such as sensors, switches, and push buttons. 2. Executing the user program based on the logic we have written. 3. Managing communication and networking to exchange data with other PLCs, HMIs, and industrial devices. 4. 
sending output signals to output modules, which control devices like motors, relays, and lights. The CPU continuously processes this cycle in milliseconds, ensuring real-time control and automation. In the S7300 PLC series, CPU modules range from CPU 312 to CPU 319. As the CPU model number increases, its capabilities also improve. Higher input and output capacity. More timers and counters. Faster processing speed. Enhanced network support. Every S7300 CPU includes an MPI port. This is the MPI port of the PLC, which is used for Programming the PLC. Connecting to an HMI human machine interface. Communicating with other S7 PLCs. Some S7300 CPUs come with built in support for advanced industrial networks, such as PROFI bus, PROFINET, or point to point network. However, not all CPUs support industrial networking. If the project requires network communication, but the selected CPU lacks built in support, you can add CP communication processor modules to enable the necessary network connections. The label 2 point to point on the CPU indicates that it supports point to point communication. This, the MPI port, and this is the point to point port. The S7300 CPUs are available in two main categories 1. Compact CPUs, 2. Modular CPUs. Let's dive deeper into each of these CPU types in the next section. A compact CPU includes not only the CPU itself, but also built in digital or analog inputs and outputs, which can be directly used in a project. This is ideal for smaller projects that don't require a large number of input and output modules. However, if the project demands more input and output, the system can be expanded by adding extra input and output modules to meet the project's specific needs. How to identify a compact CPU? The letter C at the end of the CPU model number indicates that it is a compact version. For example, in this CPU, you can see that it includes 10 digital inputs and six digital outputs integrated directly into the CPU unit. In contrast, a modular CPU does not have built-in inputs and outputs. Instead, you must select input and output modules separately based on the specific requirements of the project. To identify whether a CPU is modular, the most important characteristic is that it does not have any built-in inputs or outputs. This means that all input and output modules must be selected and connected separately based on the project's needs. Another way to identify a modular CPU is that it does not have the letter C at the end of the model number. The letter C indicates a compact CPU, so its absence suggests that the CPU is modular. Siemens 7300 CPUs follow a fixed naming pattern. CPU the 30th YZ, where each part of the code provides important information about the CPUs. Capabilities. This three-digit X vertex number refers to the CPU model, ranging from 312 to 319. The model number determines the CPU's performance. Higher numbers indicate faster scan cycles, larger memory, higher input and output capacity. The letter Y represents the type of CPU. If there is no suffix, the CPU is modular. If there is written C letter, the CPU is compact, which includes integrated input and output modules. If there is written IFM, it is integrated function module similar to a compact CPU, but includes high-speed counters for precise applications. If it is F, it means fail-safe CPU, which is designed for safety-critical applications, ensuring maximum security in process control. The Z suffix defines the communication ports supported by the CPU, which I will explain in more detail at an advanced level. No suffix expresses one MPI port. 2DP expresses one MPI port plus one Profibus DP port for industrial communication. 2PTP shows one MPI port 
plus one point-to-point -point port for connecting peripheral devices like printers or barcode readers. 2PNDP shows one MPIDP port, plus one or two Profinet ports for Ethernet-based communication. This naming structure helps in selecting the right CPU based on project requirements, ensuring the best combination of performance, communication, and expansion options. The Siemens 7300 PLC is equipped with several LED indicators that provide valuable status information about the system. These LEDs help in diagnosing system errors, power status, and communication issues. Below are the key LED indicators. Stop LEDs. Color is yellow and indicates the CPU is in stop mode or has encountered a serious error. Possible causes. The CPU may have been manually stopped or there could be a software or hardware failure. Run LEDs color is green and indicates that the CPU is operating normally. It flashes during startup and stays on when the PLC is working properly. Force mode LEDs color is yellow and indicates that at least one input or output is forced on or off in the PLC. This is typically used for troubleshooting or testing purposes. I will speak about force mode in programming session. DC5. Volt LEDs. Color is green and indicates the 24 volt DC power is being supplied to the CPU and the power supply is working correctly. Bus fault LEDs. Color is red and shows that a communication issue in the network, such as a bad contact in a communication connector, overlapping addresses in the network. System fault LEDs color is red and shows that a system error in the PLC, which could be caused by a software issue, for example, programming error, a hardware failure, for example, power loss in one of the input or output modules. Summary of LED colors. Red LEDs, system fault and bus fault show critical errors that require immediate attention. Yellow LEDs force mode and stop mode show forced values or a stopped CPU. Green LEDs DC5, volt and run show the system is operating correctly. By understanding the meaning of these LED signals, we can troubleshoot and diagnose issues more efficiently, ensuring the smooth operation of the automation system. The memory card slot in the Siemens 7300 PLC is used for inserting a special Siemens memory card that stores the program downloaded to the PLC. This memory card is essential because it retains the program even if the PLC loses power, ensuring system reliability. Unlike standard memory cards, the S7300 memory card is specifically designed for this PLC series and cannot be replaced with other types of memory cards. It is crucial to use a compatible card to avoid system errors or malfunctions. The size of the memory card varies depending on the project requirements. It can range from 64 kilobytes, 128 kilobytes, 256 kilobytes, and 512 kilobytes to larger capacities like two megabytes, four or even eight megabytes, providing flexibility for different automation applications. Selecting the right memory card size depends on the complexity of the PLC program, the amount of data storage required, and future expansion possibilities. A larger memory card is recommended for advanced applications with extensive logic and data handling. The mode selector switch on the Siemens 7 300 PLC allows users to change the PLC's operating mode. It has three main positions, stop, run, and MRE's memory reset. In stop mode, the PLC halts program execution, allowing users to modify configurations, download new programs, or troubleshoot the system. In run mode, the PLC starts executing the loaded program, controlling the connected devices based on the logic defined in the software. The MRS memory reset function is used to clear the PLC's memory and reset it to its initial state. This is useful for resolving errors or recovering from corrupted data. When performing a memory reset, the selector switch must be toggled in a specific sequence to ensure a proper reset. This function should only be used when necessary, 
as it will erase the stored program from the PLC's RAM. In the next session, I will explain the memory reset procedure in detail. PLC inputs can be categorized into two main types, digital inputs and analog inputs, depending on the type of signals they receive from field devices. In the next video, I will talk about inputs and outputs modules, and I'll describe their function. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. I will guide you.